Wow. Knicks yes. already have a starting shooting guard in Courtney Lee. Um, so, Mr. Vasilla, what, what do you make of their decision to make this offer of the young Hardaway? Uh, look, he's been an, a below average player the first three three years of his career. And, you know, he was pretty good last year. Uh, shot it pretty well. He was about 35% for three for most of his career. But, you know, this is this weird world we've lived in here where every time you look at a contract that's bad, somebody goes, well, you know, that's just kind of what it is. I love to live in this world where I believe there still are contracts that can be bad, even though the cap has spiked as much as it has, about 30 million bucks in just a very short span. And then they add the trade kicker for 15% and the player option on the fourth year. I mean, I will bet you 71 million he probably does not opt out three years from now. Um, you know, I don't know if anybody wants to take that bet. I don't think that Atlanta would match it. I mean, weirder stuff has happened here, but I can't tell if this is just Steve Mills who now is kind of in this role as they were supposedly trying to figure out who's going to run the Knicks. People are saying he now just wants to do this. He brings back somebody he's familiar with. Mm -hmm. But this is a lot of money for somebody who's been in the league for four years, who's only shown that he can probably be a regular starter, one of the four. And, and the theme all week long was, hey, Steve Mills is going to be conservative and try to figure this out and do this slow. And There's the headline right there. All right, hang tight, uh, because we do have Summer League. I know that's your favorite thing to talk about. I love Summer League. Exactly. And a lot of people are talking about, of course, Gordon Hayward, Jazz fans, Salt Lake City. Fans with signs saying, coward, scared of the West. I love this. Ainge, another reason to hate BYU. And we will never forget you, Howard. That's cold. Jason Tatum, all that buzz with the Celtics. That's a bad sign. Yeah, yeah. Donovan Mitchell, it just shows you that they're, they're, they're frustrated. But a lot of that anger turning into quick cheers here for Mitchell. Mitchell, the crossover floater, Tatum, beautiful, beautiful step back there. One more look, double-double, 12 points, 12 rebounds, 4 of 12 shooting. Tatum in three three games now, everybody just trying to trying to get one-on-one. -on -one. And, that, and that was the case for Mitchell, the 13th overall pick out of Louisville, said he wanted to guard him, and he does. The body there, and then some jawing back and forth, the foul, a little stare down. Jazz fans in the arena loving it. We see reaction also coming from Jazz players, too, on the effort from Mitchell. Tatum, one on one. The spinner. Inside of the hammer. Julian Wright from Donovan Mitchell. And Tatum was on his backside. Oh, my. Play of this week. That's a beautiful look. Joe Ingles, new teammate weighing in. Yeah. Again, as I mentioned, Jazz players noticing the effort from the young Bucks. You know, anytime you play a guy who's the top pick, everybody's coming for him. And I just, same thing with yesterday. They got, didn't get the opportunity with my, my good friend of mine, Markel. So I just wanted to go out there and just show I could play defense today. Kind of all happened so fast, but it's just within the flow of the game. And it's definitely a spark. You know, we, were, we didn't really have energy in the first half, so I just wanted to make my presence felt. I wasn't really hitting shots. I didn't really have a great offensive game. But like I said, the defense travels. So it's, you just got to make sure you have a great defensive game, even if shots aren't falling. That's how coaches fall in love. When you're aware that your shot's not falling, you finish with eight points of family there, all smiles. But you bring the defense and that effort. And after the game, the Jazz tweeting out these images of Donovan Mitchell with the message, get used to it wow they're feeling good about themselves and they need something positive what was your reaction to the matchup here with tatum and and all the love and the attention the last week matched up against mitchell i thought he had 30 when i woke up and started watching some of the stuff he had eight yes all right not than mitchell yeah no, he's you know it's a really good draft pick and utah is one of the best front offices in the nba and i loved what they did on draft night and when you watch donovan you could see louisville you go wait a minute like is this one of those guys that should be thought of as going higher. It was just a deep, deep draft. And you've also seen some of these hybrid guard types that it just doesn't work out for for a bunch of different reasons. Sometimes they're just not big enough. But I thought last night, the one thing that jumps out of you at Mitchell, and you saw this when he was in college, is that he's just not afraid. Yeah. Like, he's absolutely not afraid. There's no passiveness. I think there are times, it happens a lot, and I don't think it's really a, a bad thing, but it's just predictable with rookies where they're just deferring so much their passive it's almost like, well, I'm not supposed to be good until year two or year three. Mm -hmm. um, some guys have that personality coming in, and Mitchell absolutely doesn't have that. So that's a great sign for Utah. Yeah, he's like, I'm good now, and yeah. I'm going to let you know yep. how right. good I am. Uh, later today marks the start of the Vegas Summer League. Lonzo Ball making his debut for the Lakers. What do you expect to see out of him? The great thing about Lonzo is that wherever you plug him in, he's going to make people around him better. I mean, he really is special in the way I've seen him through this one year at UCLA. 
And I kind of can't wait to see him with really good NBA players, so it's not necessarily going to happen this week, um, to see how much better, how effective he is. But the thing that's going to be weird about this, and you can already see this happening in social media with Lonzo, is that you're going to have guys that will be in the league that are going to want to go at him. And then you're going to have a lot of the guys, if you watch these summer league games, I mean, there's a very large portion of these players you're never going to remember again. Like, will there be somebody out there that tries to make a name for themselves just because we know how much attention Lonzo is going to get in the summer league, knowing that that's a guy that's probably going to be, whether it be, you know, in, in the developmental league or, or playing overseas? Okay, so you look at things a little bit differently than any, anybody else watching a game and they look at the box score and say, did he have a good game? What does Lonzo Ball have to do in this game to kind of show you, okay, I like what he's doing right now? Well, I, look, Kevin, I mean, I'll, I'll just be honest about it. He could be terrible yeah. this next week, and it's not going to change my opinion of who he is as a basketball player. Understood. Guy. So, but are you looking for anything specific in his game to the, uh, tonight? Um, you know, I, I think that the one knock on him, it isn't the shooting. Like, we all know everybody doesn't like his shooting yeah. form, but the numbers are much better than, than I think he even gets credit for. I mean, the number's there. Like, he, he, he knocked down shots. But scouts that have been concerned about his shooting will tell me, that the shot is so weird that they wonder if he can actually get to even, not that the mid-range shot is cool anymore, but can he off a screen if he just has a real nice opening? Is there any in-between for him? Like, can he get that shot off in traffic? Can he get that shot off contested? Or is it always stepping out a little bit more from three? But that's just not his game. That's not the part of it that I'm worried about right now. But it is something to just pay attention to. And be like, where is he taking the shot? Does he have any concern getting this thing off? Because he's just so good at getting his teammates involved. Like, guys are going to get passes from him tonight that there are 10-year NBA vets that, will, that won't set them up as well as Lonzo does. That's how special he is in that department. That's pretty cool. Looking it forward is. to it. Lonzo and the Lakers will play Tatum and the Celtics tomorrow night. Looking forward to that. Ryan's going to be back in the 9 o'clock hour with all the latest from around the league. Hey, let's take a look at the lineups here at 8.25. Two hours in the books here on Sports Center AM and making Jay Harris money. Jay Harris <laughs> yeah. Listen, you know, the, the no brainer is Steph, right? You're going to give Absolutely. him that super, super, super max. Super max, right? yes, yes. It's the other guy, it's the, the second tier, the third tier guys where you're like, woo, they got money to spend. These teams are shelling it out this week. Yeah, just when you thought all the money had dried up in the NBA, we saw plenty more passed out yesterday. Vince Carter, Dirk Nowitzki also set to come back for a 20th NBA season. Check out the money these guys got big big cash another veteran making a deal rudy gay two years 17.2 million with the spurs includes a player option for the second year gay looking to bounce back from that season ending achilles injury he suffered in january after having his rights renounced in the aftermath of the gordon hayward deal kelly olenix agent telling espn the, that he's agreed to a four-year 50 million dollar deal with the heat that includes a fourth year player option so Kelly Olenek in Miami and then there's Tim Hardaway Jr. the former Nick could be headed back to MSG or Adrian Wojnarowski and Ian Beckley reporting the Knicks have given Hardaway Jr. a four-year 71 million dollar offer sheet the Hawks will have 48 hours to match that Kev and here is the cover of the New York Daily News with the reaction to the offer to Tim Hardaway Jr. holy sheet <laughs> yeah, that is well done by the tabloid. Uh, for much more on the Knicks, Ian Bagley joining us here on SportsCenter AM. So Hardaway Jr. heading back to New York where he was drafted with that offer. Now getting a big paycheck. What do you expect will be next for the Knicks? Kevin, the Knicks need a point guard. And the tricky thing here is that Tim Hardaway Jr. offer sheet pretty much takes up all their cap space. You know, what they'll have to do is renounce Derrick Rose to fit Hardaway into space, and then they'll have about $4 million left to offer a point guard on the open market via an exception. Now, they've been in touch with Derrick Rose, they've been in touch with Rajon Rondo, and they've been in touch with Shelvin Mack. Is $4 million enough to get any of those guys in? I think we'll have to wait and see on that, but it seems unlikely, at least on Rose and Rondo. Now, what they can do to free up some more money, since they brought in Hardaway Jr., or we expect them to, they have a surplus at shooting guard. You know, they signed Courtney Lee for, to a four-year deal last summer. Could they look to move Lee and create some more cap space? That's a move that I would expect them to look into here. 
Earlier in the week, we had you on. We talked about Steve Mills and, and this conservative approach, and then you see that $71 million offer. Uh, it feels like a little twist and a change in philosophy. What's the latest here with the philosophy with Mello and trying to potentially move him? No change there. Um, many people within the Nick organization still think that they're better off moving on from Carmelo to, to move forward here. And I think Carmelo would be open to and is considering, you know, waiving that no trade clause to go to Houston or to go to Cleveland. And the Knicks and the Rockets have been in touch. The Rockets recently expressed confidence to people that they would be able to land Carmelo, the sticking point is as it has been Ryan Anderson. Ryan Anderson is the Rockets' biggest contract that they can move. The Knicks have not shown any interest in bringing Ryan back in a trade. So the trick here is finding a third team to take on Anderson to make this deal work. But it still seems that both parties, meaning the Knicks and Carmelo, are more open to moving on than they are to sticking together. And that's been the storyline uh, this entire offseason with Melo trying to find that third or maybe fourth team. Ian Bagley uh, covering the Knicks with us this morning on Sports Center AM. For more, let's welcome on uh, Ryan Rossillo and Mike Wise to the program. Mike, start with you. You've spoken to someone inside the Knicks organization about their offseason. Um, what was your takeaway from that conversation? I don't want to say complete disarray, but I don't think they're ready to do anything until they get a general manager in place. And I know Steve Mills is uh, essentially the general manager, but they're interviewing, supposedly they're going to interview David Griffin very soon, the former Cavs general manager. I don't, I just don't see them doing anything with Carmelo, and I know they haven't heard from him that he's waived his no-trade clause. They've read it in the media, but they haven't heard from him personally that he's waived his no-trade clause and that he would be interested or, or be open to be going to teams like Houston or, or Cleveland. I know everybody at home thinks that we only talk about the Knicks and we only talk about the <laughs> Lakers and we only talk about the Celtics. We're going to change it up here. All okay. Right? Uh oh. I was Let's prepared. go to the Western Conference. The Kings and Vince Carter, they've agreed to a one-year deal worth $8 million. That's a big deal here. Carter, the oldest player in the NBA, entering his 20th season. Let's see what else the Kings have been up to this offseason. And they've been very active here, Ryan. Is it possible they're actually doing well? They got an A grade on their draft from Chad Ford. They turned four picks into four players from established college programs. And that group led by De'Aaron Fox out of Kentucky, including Justin Jackson out of North Carolina. And then you got Harry Giles of Duke, Frank Mason of Kansas. The, the Mason stuff is interesting, too, because there's a sense of toughness that he could bring. And now the proven veterans that they brought in so far, George Hill, Zach Randolph, and now Vince Carter joined the roster, 10 all-star appearances between the group. So it, it, it begs the question here. How have they done, Ryan? What's your opinion of the Kings offseason so far? You know what I, I find really ironic about this is that guys like Zach Randolph and Vince Carter are the exact players DeMarcus Cousins needed his teammates. He needed somebody like these guys, this kind of personality, Zach Randolph, to say, enough, stop this. And they never did it while he was there. So now that he's gone... <laughs> Um, so, you know, look, I, I love the De'Aaron Fox pick. I, I think he has a chance to be really special. The other names, Jackson's a real fit, specific guy. If Giles ever gets back to where he was in high school, it'd be terrific. And then Mason, you know, maybe. I mean, he's a good enough shooter. But the names on that list, it's really about Fox. But I just, I mean, it's still a team that's missing the playoffs. We yeah. all understand that, right? I just remember that um, uh, Tim Legler called it the post-boogie apocalyptic era. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know if I'd go that far, but I, I just feel like, you know, the biggest problem that Sacramento and a lot of like, Utah's always had is luring people to their to their environment. And these guys seem to want to go there because they're at their end of their careers. Yes. But also, like, you have this nice mix of old and new. I, I'm going to say I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to say that's my eighth eighth Western Conference playoff team. No, that's really? my eighth Western wow. Conference you, you, playoff you team. You think they'll make the play? Yeah, and I don't want you to ever play this back because I'll be completely wrong. <laughs> but I'm just, wrong I'm just throwing it out there. I'm just throwing it out there. You disagree, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean we're still we're a week into free agency, and I, I'm I'd love to see the finished product on some of these teams, but like. <laughs> The Timberwolves weren't a playoff team last year. Yes. So they're my seventh. They're their seventh. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> I have a feeling we get to ten. Be a heck of a yeah, playback right. for you. Yeah, this is, <laughs> might, might get ready. This is all takes exposed. By the way, right? <laughs> this is going to be in trouble. Exactly. You know. But uh, yeah, no. I look. De'Aaron Fox, I think, is ready to play right now, and I can't say that about every guy that was drafted in the top ten. So mm -hmm. I like him. No. How tough must it be out west, looking up at the? Warriors and the, the Rockets and thinking, how am I going to compete against those guys? 
I don't think, I think if you're a general manager, if you're an owner, you just have to look to 2018, or I'm sorry, 2019, 2020, and start thinking that if we're realistically going to contend, we need to put, the, put our building blocks in place now because I, I just don't, and, and Ryan might disagree with me, I don't even see the Spurs with Rudy Gay or any making that jump. I don't, I don't see them winning a seven-game series against the Warriors. I think the Warriors are something special, and, and, and I can't remember a team that, that has put this much distance between themselves and the rest of the lot. And it's not just the Warriors, too. If you look at all the other teams there in the yeah. top four, uh, you're going to battle it out. Even the bottom four in that top eight, I, I feel bad for a team like the Blazers when you look at the talent that they have and the stars with those guards, and McCollum and yeah. Lillard, and, and you're like, are they even closer to what they did last year? Well, Portland had some defensive problems that, that they would admit. I mean, they were, they yeah. were a pretty bad defensive team, even though you love that backcourt. I mean, it's probably one of the three best backcourts in the NBA with yeah. those two guys. But when you mention the Warriors, like I like what Daryl Morey has done. Instead of this plan of, oh, well, the Warriors are just going to be awesome for four years, he and he admits it. It's, it's very much almost like a portfolio manager where he goes, we are <laughs> taking on more risk because that's what it is right now. So... I understand, like, there's certain teams that are positioned, Mike, that could say we're young enough that we can kind of just take a knee on all this stuff for a little while, but there's still that salary cap floor, which you've got to get to 90% of what the cap is, so you still have to spend some of that money, so that's why you're seeing some of these contracts. But I am more impressed, even if I think it's more futile, the teams that aren't deciding to just wait it out for three years to see what happens with Golden State. I, I agree in, in, that, in that realm, especially with uh, Houston, because... If, if there were any team, I, I want to see, if they're not done, that's a team I think could make some noise. If they are done, I, you know, I, I still want to see if Chris Paul and James Harden can play together. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's my big question mark. All right. So. And then there is Kelly Olynyk, who signed a four-year, $50 million deal with the Heat after having his rights um, renounced by the Celtics after they signed Gordon Hayward. Uh, check, check this out for Olynyk and um, his Canadian brother. A couple of Canadians just agreeing to new deals in their respective sports. Connor McDavid of the Edmonton Oilers now with the richest per year deal in the NHL, $12.5 million annually. Kelly Olenek just agreeing to that four-year deal with the Heat, also worked twelve and a half a year. Difference is to get that deal in the NHL, you got to be the reigning Hart Trophy winner, lead the league in points. In the NBA, Olenek tied for 150th in points per game last season. And not to pile on, but did we mention that Olenek is going to Miami? When January rolls around, that translates to about a 50-degree advantage in temperature for Olenek. And we won't even mention the fact that there is no state income tax in Florida. So, Mike, the Heat lost out on Gordon Hayward, moving on with their plan B pretty quickly. What do you think of the Miami Heat? I mean, this was, a, this was clearly a fallback move. This was your, this was your plan B move. It was, it was the, I'm, I'm not going to be a neuroscientist, so I'm going to become a barista at Starbucks, basically. But, and, and, and I don't think it was that much of a drop-off. The amazing thing is, Kelly Olenek made that money, to me, in Game 7 against the Wizards. <laughs> he had this unbelievable game. Right. And, and not that he wasn't a good reserve to begin with, but, I, you know, look, it's the new normal. I think that guys are going to get this kind of money. Good luck for him. I just didn't know, and I'm surprised too, that, that basketball has become the national pastime in Canada now. Yeah. I mean, Canada's been, been giving us all sorts of talent. Yes. It's, it's terrific. But yep. if you think about the numbers here, and I was doing a little math on this, is if Olenek had signed for four years and $32 million, would we freak? Or we go, you know, whatever. I mean, he can start in spots and be a role player. Because that's kind of what this contract is in this new world. So if you go back two years ago and you look at the cap, it's just about $70 million, and you look at it now, just over about 100. That's this contract you just signed. I mean, you just have to you just have to multiply it by what this is now, and him making 50 million. It seems absurd, but it's really not that far off from what the contract would have been with a 70 million dollar cap. So yes, Miami fans aren't going. Oh, that's pretty cool. Like Hayward, yep. Olenek. I mean, it's yeah. two completely different guys. But we have to start remembering how some of these deals work with the hundred plus million dollar cap. I, th I just think everybody in America is upset because he looks like a roadie from Metallica. And so how can you give that kind of guy money? But, I, you know, look, I mean, Miami's still got to get a star. Yeah. I mean, again, Dragic is good. Oh, Hassan Whiteside is a special player. But you, if you're going to be if you're Pat Riley and you couldn't convince Gordon Hayward and you lost Dwayne Wade and LeBron James in the last three years for different reasons, mm -hmm. You got to get another star if you're going to make if you're going to fill that arena every night again. But I just 
I hear that, Mike, and I go, you, you, I mean, look, you know this, so I'm not telling you anything you don't know. It, it, it's just so hard. I mean, yeah, there, I know, you know it's there's, there's 20 plus that. teams going, when are we going to get one of these top five guys? And most of those GMs are never going to get that guy, and then they're going to lose their job, and they're going to become assistant GMs. So when I look <laughs> at Riley and this, this idea that he's lost his touch, in a way, Heat fans should be thrilled that seven years ago you even had the touch to pull off what was the greatest free agent summer that we'd ever seen. Yeah. So getting one of those ever is actually pretty rare. So I think the mistake may have been because that happened the way it did in 2010, that it was just supposed to happen all the time, and the Heat are loading up for Duran. They're going to be able to keep LeBron. And, oh, you know, Pat Riley and these guys, banners, the rings, all these different things. Most every team is getting through this week feeling disappointed about not getting that big game. And the mystique of that meeting and the, yeah. you know, the legend that came out of that story with the rings and stuff. Well, I, I and almost everybody feel like, thinks it's a guarantee. Right. You know? I mean, if Wade wasn't there in 2010, that doesn't happen. Yes. Okay. And mm -hmm. so maybe at the time we gave Riley a little too much credit, but I would say today Riley's taking far too much heat as if he's lost his touch and that he's somehow become a failure, which would be absurd to even suggest about somebody like Pat Riley. I feel like Pat Riley um, created the monster of the <laughs> super team, point, yeah. and it came back to eat him. And it came back to eat a lot of people. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And the Warriors just keep on eating. They do. <laughs> just snacking away. Uh, Ryan, mm -hmm. Mike, thank you much. Thank you. 2017 NBA draft. The Los Angeles Lakers select... Lonzo Ball. It's a dream come true. Thank you for everybody helping me get here. Mike Wise of the Undefeated back with us now. The Vegas Summer League kicking off tonight, which means we'll be seeing the debut of Lonzo Ball in the Lakers uniform. What excites you the most about Lonzo and his appearance in Summer League tonight? Lonzo Ball to me is, and I know people have used a cross between Jason Kidd and Magic Johnson. He reminds me a little bit of Pete Maravich, too. Mm. He, he has this ability. He, the ball's on a string. He's a pure point guard in a league where so many kids have grown up being pat, uh, shoot first point guards. And so this guy's not only got a stroke, even though it reminds me a little bit of Jamal Wilkes back in the day where he curves his arm around. Yeah. But, but just to see the excitement of him going up and down the floor, finding his teammates. This is a person who gives himself to the good of the group. I mean, what I mean by that is he's happier when the ball's landing on someone's fingertips and they're putting it in, then he's doing it, then he's throwing it down himself. And, and you can't say that about a lot of players in, uh, in, in this league. So, so I'm looking forward to that. And you didn't know this, Jay, but tonight is the debut of the Zo 2 from the Big Baller Brand shoe collection. I did not know that. No, it's four ninety five, and not not like four ninety five, four dollars and ninety five cents. How many pair did you get? I saved my money for my kids' college fund instead. <laughs> Yeah, he's a smart man. Yeah, I'm not giving LeVar Ball nothing. <laughs> nothing. No. Um, oh. Earlier this week, the Nets agreed yeah. to an offer sheet with Otto Porter, four years, $106.5 million deal. Washington has the ability to match the offer sheet. What are you hearing about the Wizards and, and Porter? What are you having for dinner tonight? I haven't decided yet. All right, let's just say it's chicken. Okay. As sure as you're having chicken, right. Otto Porter is resigning with the Wizards. Okay. And the only reason I'm saying this is because uh, – I, I've, I obviously live in Washington, and I've, I know the, the organization. They are not going to lose Otto Porter, mm. and they're, they're just determined to keep him. They think he's a glue guy. He was the number three pick. He's a pick that people thought you know, was too high at the time, and he wasn't. they've developed him. And one thing about the Wizards is they haven't developed a lot of players in their history. And, you know, they've, they've moved guys. That Rip Hamilton ended up in uh, Detroit, and they've, they've lost all these. You know, Rashid Wallace was once a Wizard. All these guys that they drafted never matured in their organization. This guy did. He's not only, uh, he's not only a great person, he's a tremendous player. And, you know, is he a perennial all-star? No. But he's a glue guy that you need to keep on your roster. And he came into his own last season. Yes, he did. Season. Yes, he did. All right, uh, Mike's going to be back uh, next hour with plenty more from around the NBA. Mike, thank you. And thank I'm going to get you to take me to dinner. How about that? <laughs> All right. Jay, Mike, uh, a lot of guys are going to be buying uh, Donovan Mitchell and as well as uh, Jason Tatum dinner because these guys showing out in their performance at the Summer League in Salt Lake City. Utah fans um, are not, not pleased with uh, Gordon Hayward leaving, showing their, their emotions on... Um, on the big screen.
that will never forget you, Howard. And I love the Ainge, another reason to hate BYU. Yeah, okay, don't hold back. Donovan Mitchell uh, against Jason Tatum. This was the matchup I think everybody had circled coming into this game, and Tatum fade away, beautiful. Tatum, third pick overall out of Duke, looking strong and silky smooth. 12 points, 12 rebounds. Meanwhile, Mitchell, the 13th overall pick out of Louisville, not afraid to play some defense, not shy on the matchup, said he wanted to cover Tatum one-on-one, -on -one and he'll win this one. You'll hear the whistle, physicality, little stare down, Mitchell sending a message, not backing down. Jazz fans in the arena loving it. Then Mitchell going one-on-one -on -one with Tatum here. Sound up. Tatum, one-on-one, -on -one. the spinner. Inside the hammer, Julian Wright from Donovan Mitchell, and Tatum was on his backside. Oh my, play of this week. Julian Wright with the finish. Many Jazz players been weighing in on Mitchell's performance the last couple games. Joe Ingles going, Donovan! You know, anytime you play a guy who's the top pick, everybody's coming for him, and I just... Same thing with yesterday. They got, didn't get the opportunity with my, my good friend of mine, Markel, so I just wanted to go out there and just show I can play defense today. Kind of all happened so fast, but it's just within the flow of the game, and it's definitely a spark. You know, we, were, we didn't really have energy in the first half, so I just wanted to make my presence felt. I wasn't really hitting shots. I didn't really have a great offensive game, but like I said, the defense travels, so it's, you just got to make sure you have a great defensive game, even if shots aren't falling. What a great mindset. Aware that the shot wasn't falling. Finished with eight points, so he brought the defense and then picks with the family.